Here we are in central Victoria on the 27th of October on a 23 degree day. I'm standing in front of a red circle 200 litre tank with 24 tubes to heat it. It's 24 evacuated tubes that are flooded. So there's actually water within those evacuated tubes, which is a bit unusual because often um, there's a heat transfer through heat pipes. This is a direct system into a low pressure tank on the roof which is open and vented and in fact if you look carefully you may see steam coming out of the top of that tank um, so the water is up to somewhere between 80 and 90 degrees in that tank and bear in mind that we shower in 40 degrees so there's plenty of hot water so in effect there's 400 litres of the temperature you actually use it because obviously you're going to be adding coal to this um, this is a red circle system this system here is worth, not worth, the price is about $2,000. It's worth a lot more than that. That includes the stainless steel tank, 24 evacuated tubes, the frame. Um, in addition, you may need a, uh, an element, an electric element, a 2.6 kilowatt element that fits to the bottom of the tank. And this is an element that um, may or may not be necessary depending if you're connected to a wood fire or not. This system is connected to a wood fire. Um, and then there's also an installation kit which is highly recommended as part of the purchase because it makes things so much easier for your plumber. This is the system we're looking at today. The red circle uh, solar hot water system using evacuated tubes that are flooded with water. So there's water going through each one of these 30 tubes, evacuated tubes. That's heating 250 litres in this stainless steel tank. Uh, these are all manufactured in China to a high standard. And the total weight of this system is 440 kilograms, spread over 2.2 metres. You can see that this is a reasonably flat roof and we have a high profile frame. The frame comes included in these systems and you can have one like this, but if you already have a pitched roof, um, you can have a 15 degree frame and we'll be looking at one of those a little later. So what we've got is flooded evacuated tubes. So the water going through these tubes is directly connected to this water in the tank. This is not the water that comes out of your shower or your taps. This is a low pressure system and if you look across to the top of that tank, you can see that there's a little bit of a pipe that ends, and that's an open and vented system. So that the water in this tank can boil, whether it be from the sun or the sun in combination with the wood fire, and the water can boil and the steam just escapes there with no problems with um, pressurization building. The other thing I should mention about these tubes is that behind, these two areas here there are reflectors so when the Sun moves to its noonday position the Sun comes down hits the front of these evacuate tubes and it also bounces off the back so that you're getting a huge addition to the value of the Sun this is a, a system that has got um, no moving parts the advantage of that is you don't have to have a pump or a solar controller or any of those things that, that um, can fail. Sorry, there is one moving part and it's a solenoid underneath that PV panel you see at the end there. That PV panel drives the solenoid that allows top up water so that when the water boils in the tank, which is will do on hot summer's days and in the winter when the fire's on, um, the makeup water comes via a solenoid, um, so you don't even need to connect it to electricity. These systems can also have an electric element, and normally the electric elements would go in here. The electric element is a 3.6 kilowatt element and is one that will heat the whole tank. Very often, these close coupled systems, these thermo siphon systems, will have the element at the midpoint which means only the top half or in this case 125 litres will get heated by the element 
this is different because the element would go in at the bottom. Now what we're looking at here is a pipe which is utilising the port that would normally have an electric element in it but this is being used for hydronics which we'll come back to in a moment. Um, yeah, so this element would heat all 250 litres in this stainless steel tank. We're now going to move into the mid position of the tank so that you can see how effective those reflectors are. And so here we are standing in front of these evacuation tubes and here you can see quite clearly that there's a reflection of the, you can see the, the reflection of the bottom of these um, tubes with, from the reflectors behind. You can't see the ones from the top because of the angle of the camera. Um, that's that vent that I was talking about, that's just that lone little 20 bill pipe sticking out of the top and that's the PV panel that works the solenoid for topping up the water in this low pressure tank. So this is a low pressure tank which is open to the atmosphere and so water can boil away without there being any danger. The water that you get out of your shower and taps on the other hand is mains pressure or in the case, this case pump pressure. And so the water goes in um, at this end here and comes out at that end there and goes to the taps um, via a tempering valve. Tempering valves again are very important because potentially the temperature in there is going to be 92 degrees on a hot summer's day. So the, there is no loss of pressure in your, in your um, showers or in your taps because this water is the same pressure as your cold water. So balancing the hot and cold in your shower is, is relatively easy. We're now going to move to the back so that I can explain the plumbing involved in plumbing in a wood fire to a solar system. Clearly in the summer, on brilliant days like this, you're going to get as much hot water as you could ever use. However, in the winter when the days are shorter and the sun's not so hot, then we're going to need to boost it. Typically you can use gas, electricity or wood fire. This particular system is on a house of household of three people and they have not got um, mains electricity. They're off-grid and so the electric element hasn't been connected. Instead they've used that port for hydronics. So we're now going to look at the plumbing necessary for wood fire boosting. This of course is the flue from the wood fire which is directly beneath here. There's a water jacket in the, in the wood fire box and the, these two pipes here go to and from the water jacket in the fire and are connected to the um, low pressure system of the tank here at the other end. So we're now going to move to the other end to see how all that works. So here we are at the back to have a look at how the plumbing is connected to this system. This particular system does not qualify for rebate and so there is no reason to have a uh, certificate of plumbing compliance. Many um, of our customers actually install these things themselves. Obviously we don't recommend such a thing but your do-it-yourself experts might feel inclined to do it. So let's start with the cold water inlet into the coil. So the cold water comes up from below and it's being pumped up into the inlet of the coil which is within this tank, within the low pressure tank. There's also a T here that goes into the solenoid and will, where the solenoid will activate when the level in the tank is low and cold water will be added to the tank to maintain the level in the 250 litres here. So that's the beginning of the coil and you'll see at the far end here, at the far end here is where the hot goes out of here and into your taps and to the shower. Um, you may not be able to see this but the vent is here in the middle and uh, that's what allows the water to boil in the tank whether it be from the wood fire or the sun or a combination of the two. So here we have water that's connected directly to the low pressure water within the tank and this water 
is connected to the wet back. Um, the water jackets within the firebox down below, which is something we'll look at in a moment. And this is the flow um, through the radiators to give heat to the radiators at that end of the house. There are two radiators there that are used as heat sinks. And so there is a thermostat in, in the tank which is this wire here that's connected to this pump so that when the temperature in the tank here is heated to 70 degrees during the winter by virtue of the water jacket, then the pump switches on and circulates the water through those heat sinks. So once the temperature drops below 70 degrees, the pump switches off, which means you're not compromising your domestic hot water. This this um, has got a thermometer on it and it's telling me that it's 70 degrees. When I last looked about five minutes ago, it was 68 degrees. It's now one o'clock on the 27th of October in central Victoria. Um, so that would be that temperature. So 70 degrees is the temperature which would trigger on and that would be by virtue of the wood fire because in the summer the pump is normally switched off. Um, this orange cap thing here is the tempering valve that drops the temperature to 50 degrees before sending the water into the house. So it's fed by cold water and hot water. So this is the hot water outlet that comes down into here, into the hot inlet of the tempering valve, and that's the 50 degree temperate water that's going down into the house. And that concludes our talk on the roof. We're going to now go below and have a look at the wood fire and the water jackets below. These are the flow and return lines that go from the back of the fire. They go behind the flue and so they're not very obvious. Um, some people actually polish the copper pipes to make them look like a ship's engine room. Um, so the, f the hot comes out of the top of the water jacket, flows up to the tank water, and that sucks the less heated water down to the bottom of the water jacket. This is a wood heater, and it's a gourmet, made by Metal Dynamics, with an eight kilowatt water jacket in it. Four or five of those kilowatts will go to heat the water in the winter and the other surface kilowatts will get driven to radiators which are in the bedrooms further down the hall here. The connection between here, here and the tank on the roof, which is, you'll remember is a low pressure tank, is through these pipes here, the flow and return. So hot water comes out of the top of the water jacket and goes up to the tank and then sucks the cold water down to the bottom of the water jackets, which is here. This happens to be another of those fires which has a cooktop and an oven beneath it. So here we are at the other end of the house with, in a child's bedroom. This is a small radiator that acts as a heat sink when the temperature up in the tank on the roof gets to 70 degrees. That triggers the pump to come on and circulate the water through a flow and return through this radiator and another radiator in the parents' room. So if you're burning wood in a wood fire to heat your house, your main living area, and you're also heating um, your, your cooking on the cooktop and in the oven, and you're using the heat for heating the domestic hot water in your solar hot water tank on the roof, if you have a big enough uh, kilowatt water jacket, and the one that we've just looked at in that fire is eight kilowatts, then this um, is an obvious use of that additional heat. Um, now it's very dangerous to, to go and find a wood fire um, and say, I wanted to do this. What you should do is to work out your total kilowatt needs for heating the space that the fire is in the domestic hot water and then the additional radiators or underfloor heating 
and then calculate how many kilowatts that is and that will be the determining factor as to which wood fire or boiler you purchase to do the hydronics, the domestic heating, the radiant heat out of the slow combustion fire and all of that stuff. So I'm here today with Luke McMillan who is one of the directors of Red Circle Solar. We're standing in a house that he built and he installed the wood fire and the solar hot water system. Um, it's something that um, we've had a long relationship. Um, I used to supply Luke and his old company with solar hot water heaters and now he supplies us. He imports these um, items from China and he imposes a very strict quality control on them. My company has, has avoided the bottom end of the market for, for reasons of not wanting to expose our customers to um, situations where there's no backup. But because we've known each other so long, I have every confidence that if anything were to go wrong, that um, Luke would see it right before it becomes a problem. Um, so Luke is somebody who I, I trust, and I wonder if you could explain what is it that allows you to draw so much hot water from a low pressure system with a coil in it? Yeah, so we get asked a lot about, um, it's a 250 litre storage tank, but it uses a heat exchange coil. Do you get the same amount of heat out of the tank? And yes, you do. You can actually get more heat out of the tank if the tank is at a temperature that's higher than um, what a usual storage tank would be at. And think of the, the amount of energy available in the water is the amount of energy in heat you can get to the, to the taps. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when we calculate the, the usable water, we don't take into account the tubes. We take into account just the storage tank. And if that is at 80, 85 degrees, you're not drawing heat off at 85 degrees. You're mixing it through the mixing valve. And so the volume actually increases. So in summer, or if you're using a wood fire to boost and you're getting high temperatures in the tank, you can actually draw off a lot more hot water than what the storage tank um, capacity is. Right, so basically the minimum that you're able to, um, that it allows you is 250 liters. That's right. Which would serve a five person household normally. That's right. And it's always hard to calculate how much hot water people need because it depends on the time of use, it depends on how much water they use, it depends on their water inlet temperatures. So there's a lot of variables, but um, a 250 litre tank, four or five people, uh, is, is the, the standard sizing that we use. And this is a, how many people live in this house? There's three people in this house. Three people yeah. in this house and it operates off wood fire and solar, the electric elements isn't connected, so no. they've never run out of hot water. No. And here we are standing outside a guest cottage bungalow at the same property. But here we've got an independent hot water service that's a 200 litre stainless steel low pressure tank with a coil in it, powered by 24 evacuated tubes. This is also connected to a wood fire, but this time not through a water jacket within the firebox. This is a flue water jacket, which will give somewhere between 2.4 and 3 kilowatts of heat to the water in the winter when the fire is lit to keep warm. Um, this also shows the low profile frame. This is a 15 degree frame that's designed to go onto roof, roofs that already have a pitch. The previous one we looked at was a 45 degree pitch frame This is to go on flattish roofs. We're now going to go and have a look at where all of this pipe work ends up in an outdoor shower. Just behind me here there's a flat plate collector which is actually being used as a wall um, and you can see just above that flat plate collector, solar collector, there are pipes that come from the roof which is the cold water supply into the tank and the hot water that comes down to the shower and to the kitchen. So here we are beneath that um, 200 litre tank with its 24 tubes. Um, here are some 20 mil pipes coming from the roof and into this shower here. Um, and they also continue on to the kitchen. We're now back in the inside of that little cottage, the guest cottage, 
and we're looking at a small wood fire with a water jacket from here to here. That's behind this um, perforated flue cover. This is the hot water from the top of the flue water jacket and you can see there's a gradual rise in this pipe before it goes into the wall and shoots up into the roof and on into the tank on the roof. This needs to be a rise of no less than 1 in 20. Um, heat will only rise, it won't go down and it won't go sideways. The heat going up there will suck the water through there and will suck the cooler water from the bottom of the tank into here. Um, in reality, this particular system should have, and the owner is probably going to install it, a U-bend, which is what we call a heat trap. And its purpose is to, to allow all the hot water to go up here. If you don't put a heat trap in there, the water will try and bubble up both because this pipe here at the bottom is closer to the heat source so it's more likely to go up this pipe than it is up this pipe and so what you're going to get is a whole lot of noise and gurgling and banging pipes so the heat trap avoids that and creates a greater efficiency so the heat trap once more is simply a U-bend where the pipe goes down to below where it enters the flue water jacket and then comes back to it and that's to prevent the heat from going downhill which is an impossibility Thanks for watching this best solar hot water video on a very good value red circle roof mounted solar hot water system. This system can also be connected to a wood fire for winter boosting and if the boiler is large enough it can even run some heating radiators in other parts of the house. Please check out the products on our website which is www bestsolarhotwater.com.au